So one of the most common questions you've been asking me lately is how do I train water files and how to create your own water file for a style or something particular. And to be honest, I haven't played with waters for a while, but for the last 48 hours, I've been digging a lot into experimenting what we can do with waters and what's the most optimal and most easy way to create waters. And actually, I even surprised myself with some of the findings that I did. So let's jump in next to my slide and I'm going to tell you about what I found and what's the most optimal way. And after that, we're going to jump in and I'm going to show you my entire process from start to finish how I create a war. What you see on the screen is a mirror board that I created particularly for the test that I did and I'm gonna explain in depth. Keep in mind this mirror board is going to be available in the description of this video so you'll be able to check it out on your own when you have the time or if you're curious to see the results and what I did. So since I haven't been training waters for a while I've tried to train a war recently with Koi ISS and I've noticed that a lot of things has changed. And here I want to say a big thank you to Bernard, uh, who is the guy that creates the GUI for the Koya SS. And with his help, I've managed to get much more better understanding of some of the changes and everything that changed under the hood inside of Koya. And some of the new things that were added that allows artists to have much more artistic control in the creation of things. So to summarize, what I did was I trained... Uh, Stable Diffusion 1.5 model with a small data set. I've gathered 100 images uh, that I've generated quickly with Midjourney just for this test. So I can quickly show you what I want to do. And here you can see the data set and all the images that were inside of the data set and um, that I used for the creation of uh, this test. So Next, what I did, I used a few things. Um, I did a few tests. The first one was I wanted to train a Wara uh, inside of Koya SS. Uh, next, I wanted to train a stable diffusion model inside of stable tuner and then extract that trained data and use it as a Wara file. And funny enough, based on my uh, extensive testing, I've put some of the examples here, but um, you can try this on your own time if you want to recreate what I did. So based on my experiments, I've came to the conclusion that the most optimal way to create a war that's most accurate is to train an entire model instead of stable tuner or whatever you feel most comfortable. And then with some of the new tools that are inside of uh, Koi SS to extract that war so you have uh, almost nearly one-to-one -one representation of that training data into a separate file that you can plug in into any other model and use it there. So what I did for my testing, uh, like I said, we trained one, uh, a pruned 1.5 CKPT file, so we don't have any um, data that's not supposed to be there. So I just wanted to test and see how everything works. Then I've tried to train a stable uh, standard WARA inside of CoSS. After that, I've extracted the war from the fine-tuned model and also with the introduction of Lycoris uh, Locon lower files, I wanted to extract one as well. And I used it, uh, this, uh, 512 dimensions for that. I'll go in depth later about the dimensions and everything else. But just to summarize everything, the, when you train a stable diffusion model, I ended up with two gigabytes of file. And from that, I've managed to extract all of my training data that's around 680 megabytes after the resizing of the world. And for the Lycoris uh, Lucon Wara, it was a smaller size, but as you can notice in the tests, I wasn't it it resembled more or less the main training that happened here, but it, it a little bit varied. Keep in mind if, uh, to show you to what extent I went. Um, I also tested the both type of, uh, types of networks that use WARA files currently in Automatic 11.11. And that's the default network that Automatic 11.11 has implemented to read WARA files, as well as the Koya network extension. And based on my results, you can see that this is the 
train it. Fine, uh, this is the fine tuned model that I did, and when I ex extracted the Wara with the Koya network, I managed to get the most closely resembling results. They vary a little bit, but just a little. So, based on my conclusion, this is the most optimal way to create Wara files right now, simply because it's faster. It and also, you can track the training process. I will go in depth just in a minute, explaining why this is important. But overall, this is my test. If you want, you can go in and check it. And also, this will help you to see how my training data uh, managed to capture all those things. I'll try to gather the files and hopefully put them on my G drive so everybody can download them and do the testing for themselves if they want to compare them. But this is what I managed to get. So next, I'm going to jump into uh, Stable Tuner and I'm going to explain to you why I'm going to train there and I'm going to walk you through the entire process. So what we're going to use next is Stable Tuner in combination with Koya SS to create our raw files and I'll explain you everything through the entire process and how I do it. And finally, I'm going to show you how to load it in automatically on LAN and use it there. So we're in Stable Tuner. Now let's discuss what are the basic settings and what we need to be aware of when we're training models. And also I will show you my main data set and the small data set I'm going to use just to quickly make a few examples. So this is the main UI of Stable Tuner. Once you install the everything, um, here are all the tabs. We're going to go one through one so I can explain in depth what's happening and what you need to be aware of. So the first thing you want to decide what you're going to do is either you're going to train with Rainboot or fine tune. Personally, for me, fine tuning is better because I'm fine tuning the entire model, and later I can extract all the fine tuned model, all the fine tuned data from the entire model. So if you want to do that, I would highly recommend it. Unless you want to train a specific concept or a class, then you can use Dreamboot. But personally, for me, fine tuning is much more flexible and gives me better results. So the first thing we need to do is we need to load a stable diffusion model. So for the test and everything I'm doing, I'm using 1.5 pruned model. So what you want to do is in the general settings, you want to go here and you want to go to your stable diffusion folder or wherever you have um, this downloaded. And you want to make sure that you're using V1.5 Brunette model. I'll try to put a link in the description where you can find those models from Honeyface, so you don't have to Google them. And once you select open, what the, this will do is it's going to take that model and it's going to convert it into diffusers. Diffusers are different type of structure for folders and your model. So basically it's going to unzip everything. It's going to put a uh, unit and value files and everything in folders. So this is how uh, it's going to use that. So w whenever you do this, it will take a little bit of time. So keep that in mind. And next you want to select the output path where you want to save your um, output raw uh, data. Keep in mind, this also is going to be in diffusers. So this is something you should be aware of. Next, let's go to the training settings um, and let's explain a few things here. First, let me show you my data set. So those are all the images that we have that I used specifically for uh, this video test that I'm going to do. And here you can see that we have uh, really different things inside of this folder. But uh, as you can see, we don't have any descriptions on those images and this is going to be needed for Stable Tuner. So, what you want to do is you want to add descriptions to your models. So before we move into the settings, I would highly recommend to go to caption body. Every time you click, it, it's going to take a little bit of time. So be patient with it. And for this one, I've made a small data set. So I want to show you my steps and what I do. So we're going to use this small representation. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the load folder. I'm going to paste my folder here, click select, and it's going to load the first image that we have here. All right, it loaded. So what you see is that caption body is going to create captions for all of our images. 
And here you can see we have a black car driving down the street next to a tall building with a uh, clock, uh, clock on the side. Keep in mind this is not perfect. Um, caption body is not perfect, but for the, this test I'm going to use, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use it. Uh, you can always edit those or you can use different types of integrators, for example, Coil's integrator or um, inside automatic 11 11 there is an integrator extension that can do captions much more better but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a batch folder caption and it's going to ask me do you want to batch into the current folder and we're going to select yes and it's going to ask us do you want to save the output in the same directory and we're going to click yes again so what table tuner does right now is it's going through all the images and it's creating descriptions for each individual file later if you want you can edit those or you can modify them if you want but just for the sake of this uh, example i'm going to leave it like this and once this is done we're going to jump in and i'm going to show you what we're going to do next okay the batching is complete so all we need to press is okay and do we want to load the batch output folder no we just want to close the caption button now and we're back into our training steps and uh, training settings so since we're training 1.5 model i will go through most of the settings and tell you what you need to be aware of while this is a 1.5 model and those images are 1k i'm not worried i'm going to set my resolution to 768 by 768 and this is going to downscale on the largest axis my image to match uh, this resolution so that's what i want to do next i'm going to train batch size of 10. keep in mind depending on your gpu you may want to lower that this means how many images are going to be pre-processed at once through the trainer so this is something i always do um Personally, for me, I was experiencing some training uh, issues when I set this to 100, so that's why I set it to 101. That's up to you. Uh, next, let's talk about mixed precision. So there are a few different uh, versions, and keep in mind, depending on what PC you have, the ones that you want to focus are FP16 and BS16. BS16 is for much more newer video GPUs like the RTX uh, 20 and 30 series, even 40 series. And the FP16 is much more slower. It works better on older GPUs and it uses less, uh, less memory. But BS16 is similar to uh, FP16, uh, FP32 or TF32, sorry. I'm not exactly sure which one of those was, but... Um, it's much more accurate so that's why i stick to bs16 because i want to train my data into the model using better accuracy and later i can compress it to fp16 so all users can use it next i want to enable 8-bit atom to lower my memory consumption uh, i don't recommend use uh, to use lion at the moment it messes up the data uh, for use gradient checkpointing make sure this is on Created accumulation steps must be one. The learning rate, I personally leave it like this. Um, and I get really decent results. It's up to you how you want to set this, but keep in mind, this is the settings I use. For learning rate scheduler, I'm going to leave this to uh, constant. And let's go to the other settings here. So we don't want to regenerate uh, latent cache. Uh, we want to train the text encoder since we have textual descriptions of all our files here. Uh, clip pen ultimate this is going to be off uh, keep in mind this setting is something that uses pen ultimate layer for the text encoder and all 2.x models are trained using this feature so if you're training on uh, stable diffusion 2.1 model this always must be on and keep that in mind for uh, limit text encoder i'm gonna leave it at 100 percent I'm going to leave my experimentation disable uh, DNN benchmark on. And also, really important thing, I'm going to use um, EMA. And basically, this will emphasize to move the dat uh, data and the weights of uh, the points of the model towards closer to my data set.
otherwise if this is off um, you may not get decent results and um, we're going to leave this off this is mostly when you're using dreamboot just as a dreamboot uh, and we're not going to use uh, offset noise keep in mind if you want to use offset noise train for less steps than 100 because this is quickly going to burn your images next let's move to data settings um, here i'm going to disable the image caption image names as captions because i don't need them and i'm just going to use uh, use text files as captions keep in mind that this do Two settings are always on. It's going to always prioritize text files, but just to make sure I always turn this off. Another thing, since I'm training in a single folder, I always turn off shuffle.set per epoch. I've realized that like this, I get much more accurate results and it's up to you, but I would highly recommend you to do that. Next, since we're using 1K images, make sure that you're using aspect ratio bucketing uh, that is enabled. And that's all the settings we're going to touch here. Next, we're moving to samples. So those are prefer uh, personal preferences, but um, keep those in mind. So here you can set on how many steps you want your model to sample things. And on how many steps do you want to uh, sample every epoch. What people don't realize is this setting here determines how often do you save of your training so if we go to train it raw data you can see that i set my uh, sam sample every n epochs to 10. this means every 10 epochs it created it creates a copy of the model with the training data inside of that folder it creates samples but also it saves my progress so if you're training for a longer time or you're training a larger amount of images you want to set this to one or two but keep in mind, each epoch is approximately around 3.9 gigabytes. So you want to have a lot of space on your hard drive. But for my needs, I'm going to set this to 10 and I'm going to leave it like this because I'm quickly generating samples and everything else. Here you can press add sample prompt and you can enter your prompts here. And also you can add a control seed sample and this is really important. And the reason this is important is that you want to have full control on the results that you get so you can easily track the progress and how the training is going. So this is highly recommended personally for me. And also I'm adding batch prompting sampling to two. This way, while I'm generating, I'm not only going to generate those four prompts with the seeds, but I'm also going to take those... Uh, text files here and it's going to open the text file it's going to read the prompt and it's going to use this prompt here or at least two files it's going to be used each time when it generates a preview it's going to take those uh, random text files and it's going to use those as prompts to generate something on top of those additional images and this is pretty good for testing how the training is going and to see how diverse your uh, training data is and so on next we're moving to uh data and here you want to add your data set so i'm going to copy this link and here we're going to press add concept next i'm going to call this main data set but you can call it whatever you want and we're going to locate our folder here uh, keep in mind we don't need class name or class path simply because what we're doing is we're fine-tuning the entire model with images so keep don't balance that set and search subdirectories off and just press save and now we have our main data set here um, and all we need to do now is press start and the training will start so just to show you um, why i use this feature one of the great things is you can use telegram token and telegram id and if you have telegram set it up you can see that um, we're getting the track of the entire training process uh, locally on the desktop inside of a uh, telegram but this is really great because i can also track this on my phone so if i'm not on the pc and i want to see how my training is going i can literally see how it starts and how it's going and it keeps me updated on how my training process 
is going through everything. And just to show you one of the great things, I can see all my settings that the Stable Tuner uses to create uh, everything. And what's great about this is it generates samples from zero st uh, steps. What this means is it uses my prompts to capture how the 1.5 pruned model looks without any training data. And it uses the same seed since we've preset those here in sampling. So it will always use the same sample seeds to generate those images. And if we go down, you can see that in the beginning, it didn't match any of our training data. And the more I go down at 10 epochs and so on, it will get to 100 epochs where you can see how much my training looks close to my data. And I can get a much more better accurate representation of, okay, the training is going well, or okay, I've overtrained the model. So for example, let's say technically we've overtrained the model and we're not happy how 100 epochs look. We can go back to a state where, for example, at 80 epochs, I like the results and I can say, okay, I like the 80 epochs better. So all I need to do now is find my 80 epoch over here and select my folder from here and inside of stable tuner once the training is done we're going to be back to our stable tuner interface so what you need to do is go to model playground and here you need to paste your uh, folder with the epoch that you want and then all you need to do is press convert to ckpt this is going to convert your model to a pickle tensor file and this is what we want um, because we want to create a model with all that trained data that we have uh, from our training. So once this is done, you will end up with a file that looks like this. This is around four gigabytes of a file. All right, so now we're inside of the Koya uh, GUI SS. Um, I have it installed locally on my machine. So this is how the Koya GUI looks. And what we want to do here is we want to go to utilities and here you can see that we have extract water, extract like ores, uh, merge waters, and resize waters. The main tabs we're going to be focusing are extract water and resize water. Uh, here again, I want to say a big thank you for uh, to Bernard for uh, helping me to understand how those things work and so on. Uh, so just to quickly explain what we need to do here. So what we want to do now is extract our training data into a model and as you can see here is all the things that we are going to use later to normalize it but first let's focus on the extraction process so if i go again to my folder i want to copy this folder for the model and i'm going to press open and i'm going to select my trained model so here we have our fine-tuned model and now we want to subtract the 1.5 prune it data from that model. So what we need to do here next is go to one second. We want to find our stable diffusion model in models. And we want to select the pruned version that we used for the training. So what is going to happen now is it's going to take the fine tuned model and it's going to subtract that data from the base model and we're going to end up with just the clean version of uh, our trained data so next you just want to set where you want to save your model so i'm going to quickly save here and call this uh, extracted extracted data save tensor so this is going to save it as a safe tensor file. I will use um, BF16 precision since I want to preserve much more of it. And next we go to the network dimensions. Uh, what you see here currently is network dimensions, but those are network rank and conversion uh, com uh, and conv rank as well. Just to try to explain how those work and what why they're important. So the, uh, those are let's say it's something like vectors they're not pixels but 
the larger the amount you use, the better your war is going to look like, but the larger the fire is going to be. So 1.5 models have around uh, 768, uh, let's call them vectors. And the 2.1 stable diffusion models have around 124 vectors or uh, ranks. So personally, I prefer to use 512 uh, ranks for network and also 512 for uh, conv rank. And since we're not using uh, stable diffusion to uh, 2.1, I'm not going to select this. But if you're using uh, any 2.x model, make sure that this is on. And with the last update of CoSS GUI, uh, now we have the ability to use uh, CUDA as device. And this is pretty powerful because right now we can literally extract all of the data using the GPU. And next, let's click Extract. And I'm going to open the console so you can see what's happening. What uh, CoSS is doing right now is it's taking all the settings that we did and it's sending them as a command directly to the script. So it's trying to extract all the data that we've trained it into a WAR file. But keep in mind, extracting this will still make a huge file and that may not, that should not scare you. Basically, we're just cleaning the model from all the original uh data that was there and we're just leaving what's what we've trained on top of it so it's like making a cake and then just removing the cake and leaving the cream on top of the cake that we've uh, added finally so once this is done gonna take a second what we want to do is we're going to resize this war and the resizing process basically is going to reduce the size of it but it's also going to uh, preserve all our settings and it's going to allow us to um, convert this into FP16 uh, model, which means that people with lower uh, VRAM or people with older hardware can still use those war files for compatibil compatibility reasons. This is something that uh, some of my users experience as an issue because I use mostly F, uh, BS16, but I realized that it's better to convert those to FP16 simply because some of my users who use my pixel art model, for example, experienced issues with this. And for everyone who uses pixel, uh, pixel model, uh, right now I've updated those models and the war files as well using similar methods. So everyone should not experience issues with them anymore. Now it's loading all the uh, keys. Just let's give it a second. And it's loading the first model. If you're wondering to track how much uh, memory this uses as a process, give it a second. So currently I'm around uh, 10.8 gigabytes of VRAM use. Um, it will always depend on your hardware and how you set it, everything up, but you should be aware of this. So you can have a better understanding of how much VRAM uh, this may cause you. Keep in mind, um, you can go with larger network uh, ranks. For example, 768 is the maximum I would go simply because uh, 1.5 models uh, have a limit and that's 768, uh, 768, but 512 is the perfect value between size and quality. So this is the one I'm sticking with. So it's loading all the unit and via files. And right now it's creating the rank with the alpha. And any second now we should extract that. So what it's doing, it's calculating the SVD. And once this is done, we're going to end up with a file. So I'm going to jump in just a little bit ahead so you can see the final file. Once this is complete, here we have our extracted war file. But you should be aware that this file is going to be around 1.7 gigabytes. And this is still large, even for a war file. And what we need to do 
is we need to resize our war file and also convert it to BS16. So next we're going to head up into the resize war tab. And here we're going to select our war. Press open. I'm going to select my war file. And for uh, desired rank, we're going to set this to 512. This is the war rank we're aiming for. Also for dynamic methods, leave it to SV for all. And uh, dynamic parameters, we're going to leave this to 0 0.9. I'm enabling uh, variables. Uh, this will basically output all of my layer information into a file so I can double check and make sure that everything's properly extracted and so on. And finally, we just need to set where we want to save our file. So I'm going to call this um, Aura. Trade Aura file. And I'm going to set my save precision to FP16. And I'm going to enable uh, CUDA. And now I'll press resize and I'm going to show you what happens after the resize is done. And our resizing of the war is done. Um, if I scroll a little bit up, you can see that those are the different layers and you can see how much optimization has occurred everywhere. And here we have our final saved file. If I go to the folder, you can see that we got down from one gigabyte to 620 megabytes. And if this is still too large for you, what I would recommend you to do is lower the desired or rank. The lower you go, keep in mind you're going to lose quality, but you also decrease the size. For me, 512 is a reasonable compromise between quality and file size. But if you want lower file sizes, go with 256 or 128. But it, it's up to you which one you prefer and which one will be much more useful for you. And I hope this summarizes and gives you a better explanation of how I do wars and which is my personal optimal way of achieving better results with war when you're aiming for a style and specifically going after quality. And regarding the video which was supposed to come out today, um, there was an update on Automatic Level site on the web UI and currently the wildcards still don't work correctly but i haven't give up on that this is going to be our next video i'm just waiting for a day or two for the gui to get fixed and so i can do it properly and explain everything in much more big depth but i hope this video was useful for you guys and i'll see you in the next one bye